Hey guys, I'm back with another video. I am super, super excited about a couple of things. First off, I just finished a new piece with my new Lorez colors I received. So I am excited to post that video. And secondly, I am finally able to do a project that I've been wanting to do forever. I don't know if you've ever seen the artist named Mike Hammer. He makes these paintings that are called blob paintings. They are just so simple yet so elegant. I love them. I've been trying to figure out how to make them forever and I just can't seem to do it. So finally, Thanks to Debbie at Mixed Media Crafts. She posted a video on how to mix the paints to do this type of art. And I cannot thank her enough for doing that because I've tried different things and I just couldn't figure it out. And now thanks to her, I am able to do it and share it with you guys. Um, blob art. Basically, what blob art is, is you mix a bunch of paints together. Well, not together. You mix separate colors. You put them in little squeeze bottles. And you make little round blobs of paint onto the canvas. When you get the canvas filled to however you like, you let it dry. And then, once it's dried... You go back, you do another layer on top of those, and it's kind of, it forms a 3D painting. It's really cool. I'm going to show you the steps. I'm going to show you how to mix the paints, what you have to mix with them. I have my colors mixed already, except for one. I didn't want to bore you guys mixing all of them on film, so I'm going to do the last color for you. Um, I'm just... I wanted to take a little break from resin and acrylic pouring and I thought this would be a fun easy project to do they're really cute and like I said they're super easy it's like just a relaxing thing to do so the first thing you need to do is get a cup and you need to figure out what type of paint you want to use so for me I am using the Deco Arts. I'm just going to zoom you in a little bit here. Uh, Deco Arts paints, the craft paints. You can use any other brand. Um, I would not suggest using a heavy bodied paint for this just because you have to get the paint to the perfect consistency for it to hold form on the canvas. So I like to use the Deco Arts because. They're the perfect consistency to start off with once you add in what you're going to add. Now, Debbie, in her video, used heavy matte gel to put into her paint. This is what helps give it the 3D look. I did mix some paints with the heavy, and they were just too thick for me. So... I wanted to go with something just a little bit lighter, so I have just the regular matte gel that I'm going to use. What happens is if it's too thick, it's almost like lemon, whoop, lemon meringue pie when you whip the egg whites. You whip it until you get the little peaks forming on the top. If you make your, your paint too thick it will do that when you blob it down onto the canvas so it has to be the perfect consistency to weigh out and I actually have a couple of canvases where that happened where I can show you um, why it doesn't look right so what you need is some gel medium the paint you're going to use which for this one I'm going to be using sea breeze and Debbie did not use this, but I am using it. I feel like it helps it dry quicker and 
flow a little bit better, I'm using some pouring medium. Another thing that I added in yesterday, which I don't know if it's even necessary, is some GAC 100. This is an extent, uh, primer and an extender for acrylic paints. It um, helps me tremendously with cracking and stuff like that. I know they have GAC 800 that a lot of artists use, but this works too for me. So, and I cannot find the 800 in my local stores. I don't want to order it online. I don't use it that much. So, the first thing you're going to do is pour your paint that you want to use into a cup. Now, just depending on the size of your little bottle that you're going to put it in, you have to consider how much room you have because I'm going to be adding paint. I'm going to be adding the medium, the gel, and um, so you can't fit much in here. So I'm not going to use this whole bottle. I'm working on smaller canvases. If you have a bigger um, squeeze bottle, then you could use the whole bottle. It's totally up to you. If you only want to do one of these, you're not going to need a whole bottle of this. So you got to kind of just base it off of what you're doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is pour my paint in the cup. And I'd say the cup is half full. The next thing I'm going to do is take my gel this this stuff they use a lot in art journaling um, mixed media work because it works as a glue also and a lot of artists will use it to mix into their paints to build height with the paint so it has a it's multi-use so I have that much I'm going to add in there. And then I'm going to swirl it around and mix it in. And then I'm going to check the consistency of my paint to see how thick it is. You want it to be thick, but you also want it to flow off of the stick, not like with I'm trying to think when you do acrylic pouring you want to use get the paint to where it flows in one set steady stream with this you really don't want that but you also don't want big you know plop 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 into the cup you want some kind of a, a little bit of a flow so I have that mixed in there now before I test it to see if it's thick enough I'm going to add my pouring medium I'd say that was probably a tablespoon worth. Again, you may be able to do this without the pouring medium. I know she did. I just like the consistency better with the pouring medium. So you're going to give it a nice little go around. And then I'm going to, this is not necessary, this next step, I just do it. I have the stuff I need to use it up before it goes bad so I just put a couple of drops in there that's it but like I said you don't need to do that I figured I have it why not so now it's all mixed and good I'm gonna check the consistency and do you see that let me bring it up close It's really thick, but it still comes off pretty easy. Okay, if it was too thick, it would be going plop, plop, plop. Gotta love my explanations. <laughs> They're so technical. Plop, plop, plop. All right, so that is, to me, the perfect consistency. So the next thing you have to do is put it in a bottle. Now, you can use a funnel to do that, or you can be like me and try to go for it 
by just pouring it out of the cup and take a chance of missing the hole and having it run down the side. I do have a funnel over here, but I'm right-handed. Got to switch around. And you just dump it in there and you're ready to go. Like I said, I have my other colors mixed up. Just going to scrape the cup, get it towards the edge here. Try to carefully get the rest in there. I would suggest using a funnel. It's a lot easier. You don't have to be so careful. And now we're good to go. So I'm working on five by seven canvases and this is going to be step one. Here's the canvas. Put a couple of cups out. Okay. So this is step one. Start blobbing the paint. I'm going to get my colors out here and let you know what I'm using. So I had the Sea Breeze. I have Purple Cow. These are all deco art. I have Peacock Teal, Royal Fuchsia, Vivid Violet, and the yellow I mixed was, I threw out the bottle, but it was a basic yellow. So I'm going for a pastel pattern here. Palette, not pattern. Very pastel. So I will start off with the one I just mixed, the Sea Breeze. And what you want to do, do the first one onto the side just to get it going. And then that's it. Do them different sizes. I like to do them right on the edge so that they drip down the side. It re looks really, really cool. Like that. All right. And you just put down as many as you want. This is the perfect consistency. I don't know if you can see it, but right when I get done pouring it, when I lift up, there's a little tiny peak, but then it goes away. That's what you're looking for. See, it goes right away. Now do one more here. So that's that color. Next, I'm going to go in with The fuchsia. I'm just going to give it a shake. Again, I'm going to do it over to the side. And here we go. Mm 
I'm just kind of looking around to see if I should put another one, maybe with a tiny one here. And then I feel like I need one over here. All right. Next will be the tea, peacock teal. You see how they're they're staying nice and fluffy looking. In a second here, I'm going to show you the next stage after they dry because I have three canvases that I worked on, and I'll show you some of the the mistakes that can happen. All right, so here is the teal. You don't want to do them too, on the first layer too close to each other because you don't want them bleeding into each other. If you have the perfect thickness, they shouldn't move much. But again, for the first layer, you don't want to get too close. So maybe another little tiny one here. Okay. And then... I'm going to go in with some of the yellow. Or actually, you know what? I'll do the white. I Sorry, I didn't mention I had white too. So just squeeze it to the side, get it going. And here we go. And it's okay if you don't have a perfect circle. You know, it's art. You try your best and... The best is all you can do. And see, you see what just happened? <laughs> so I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. It's getting pretty full. Be careful. Do not hold your bottle upside down over the canvas like I just did because that could happen. So this is step one. You're going to let this dry. I think I timed it last night. It was roughly about four hours and it was dry enough to do the second part. You just want it to be at least, you know, crispy on the top to where if you put another color on top, you, uh, it won't go in. It won't bleed into the next one. So now part two. I was hoping to have a, I need a rag. So part two, we're going to make believe that that thing that we just did, that canvas we just did, is dried. And we're going on to part two. So here's part two. And I'm going to show you the errors. So you know what to look for. So here's one that I did where the colors were not right, the consistency of them. You could see these, they have little nipples on them now, okay? They're supposed to be flat like this. So those colors, that color was too thick. It needed to be thinner. So, you just want to really pay special attention to that color. Even if you put it in a bottle and test it and it's too thick, you know what? Take it out of the bottle and get it just right where you need it. So here we are on step two. We're going to pretend it's four hours later and our paints have dried. 
Let me get you in the frame here. Okay, so basically what you're going to do is take your colors and go on top of these colors or next to them in random patterns. So for example, I will use that sea breeze that is not on here yet. Okay, and I'm going to go over this white here. I'm going to plop one here. Over here. At this stage, you can overlap on the canvas, have it touch like that in a few areas. Okay, it's whatever you want. It's your painting. But now see this one here with this big old nipple is going to give me a problem because it is raised and I feel like I can't find my tweezers. There's a little tiny hair I see on it. There I got it it's going to flow down the edges of it. Watch. Okay, it's like really raised. So, that again is why you need it to be just perfect. So I'm gonna go over here, this color. I think these would be really, really cute in a little kid's room. You know, you could do black and blue or something for a boy, or this is for probably a girl. There we go. And see, that's going to go over the edge because I didn't get it right in the center. But you have the gist. So that's step two. Now we may pretend it's four or five hours later or whenever it dries. And we move on to step three. Okay, so here's step three. We did a couple of different layers. Look how thick these are. Again, that color was no good. But I wanted to show you guys the process of this, so that's why I kept it. And you know what? I'll deal with it. I'm going to put it in my daughter's room, so it'll be fine. So step three, you have a couple, you know, you fill in where you want. Now you have a double layer. So step three is you go at it again. If that happens where it blows out because there's air in the bottle, just try to go in the center and fill it in the best that you can. Okay. This one has two layers already, so now it'll have three. These ones that have the thicker raised dots like that, I'm going to stay away from them because it's going to be way too high. And you keep going until you're happy with it. Okay? Now, you can... Build this up as high as you want to. Or you could stop after the third. You could stop after the first layer if you want to. That's cute enough as it is. Um, <clears throat> so now we're done. And we're going to pretend that everything's good and dry at least three to four days. Okay. What Mike Hammer does is he takes these paintings. 
he, let me see, let me find a different painting to show you this with. He will take the painting and he props it up like this. Okay. And then he takes resin and pours it down and it goes down and it coats everything. It's so beautiful. If you've never seen any of his videos, you should watch them. They're, the color combinations that he has are just amazing. It's just fantastic stuff. But anyway, so he coats it in resin. He lets it pour down like this. I would imagine you can also do it like this. Put the resin on. Debbie at Mixed Media Crafts, she, in her video, did a layer of the paint blobs, put down a layer of resin. Then she did another layer of paint blobs on top of the cured resin, put another layer, and then she did a third one and coated it for the final time. That made it look like a, a 3D effect. It was really cool. You should check out her video too. But um, in the end, you don't have to coat it in resin. That's just what he does and what she did. You can leave it like that and put it up on the wall. It's, it's beautiful. It's cute. And it doesn't get any easier than that, guys. It's so relaxing to just sit there and not have to think about, you know, what color you could put next to what and, you know, be worried about the paint curing on you while you're trying to work with it. It's just a very relaxing thing to do. And I highly suggest you try it. So if you have any questions, leave them below. I will be sure to answer them for you. And as always, I want to thank you for your support and happy pouring.